Yeah, good morning, Linda. <laughs> Dennis, good morning. Uh, hey, we, um, just to kind of inform you, last weekend, uh, Amanda, Mia Rikes, uh, Emma, Han, and I took um, like nine students to Hidden Acres for Spring Blaze, and we just kind of wanted to share what God did. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, just how big he is. So I made a little picture thing. This is not as good as Kristen's, FYI. So um, just uh, bear with me, and hopefully it's all right. So give a listen.
and uh, Mia want to come up and just kind of share what they had. Well, first of all, thank you for letting us take your children. It was a lot of fun. Try not to cry, but it never works. So, um, we had a lot of um, really good moments. Um, of course, my favorite is always the end to see how God convicts these kids. And he definitely did that. We had a salvation, which was beautiful. Yeah, let's cheer for that. Yes, God! And... Um, um, we had a rededication, which was wonderful, and then um, we also saw many of the kids say they needed to read their Bible on their own um, instead of just when their mom tells them to, which is just awesome. So um, it's always a, you know, a test of your patience as an adult because you are, like, going all the time, and these kids are fueled by Mountain Dew and sugar, but um, we really did have a really good time, and... I'm really thankful. Um, I think most of the kids said they want to go back again next year. So. Um, so at chapel, which is like our worship, and then where we had a leader, Mandy, taught us, the kids like learned how to, so a lot of them said they wanted to read their Bibles. So like she, everyone got these little soap methods. So we like learned how to read our Bibles. So scripture, observation, application, and prayer. And she walked us through each step. So I think it's really good because, like, sometimes nobody even teaches them, like, actually how to read the Bible. So it's good that they can do this on their own. Um, but, and it's also good because a lot of these kids have a lot to worry about, like, at home, too. So it's good to just go away and be surrounded by Christians and not have to worry about a thing but, like, having fun and drinking Mountain Dew for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, yeah. literally. Most definitely. That's the best part. Um, yeah, I only had two guys with me to this week and our, and it was awesome. Like we obviously, I think we play carpet ball like 36 out of the 48 hours. So we definitely need a carpet ball thing here. Um, yeah, uh, no, it was just, it was amazing to watch just these young men, like, um, really like grow into their own. Um, you know, like, I mean, Nyland's been with, uh, me as a leader since I don't even know he was probably little kid preschool yeah and um, and like to see him just like like Amanda's shared like he came up to me and same with uh, Jordan and was like I want to commit myself to reading a Bible reading my Bible more and like being like intentional and so like we gave him like I gave him some like helpful hints that I use that you know like just to get in the word every day and um yeah it was so cool to see like 300 fourth through sixth graders just praising Jesus all weekend long so I got fortunate to like um get to be leading them in song that was kind of a crazy story of that which that was super cool so Emma and I and um so yeah so thank you so much for letting us like have your kids um at impact every week and also just like these retreats like um it's super fun to get away with them and they get to know me on a different level i would say like i try and be fun at impact but sometimes it's a little crazy around here but man that was that was fun right it was fun <laughs> so Um, I just wanted to say one thing about that. I, I heard again this weekend of somebody coming to Christ at, at camp. Um, and uh, a, a lot of people have that testimony. And uh, something about getting away from the noise of your life and from the daily routine of your, of your regular life, even outside of your own family dynamic, and hearing the word of God and hearing the gospel proclaimed. And so some of these kids, a lot of our kids, have come to Christ at these retreats. And so praise God for that and praise God for these leaders that have invested so much time and energy to give up their own family time to go and make that happen also I just want to say Amanda how are you doing <laughs> I don't know if many of you know this but uh, this is uh, Amanda's last Sunday with us um, she is going to be heading out I, I, and I, I kind of actually found this out for the first time just last week or the other week that um, Amanda grew up in that church in, in Monmouth the, the little church there, the, it was a Methodist church, it's no longer a Methodist church, but she grew up in that church, and um, God's doing some cool stuff out there, 
uh, Angie and Adam Ruley are out there, and Jenna and Nathan Becker are out there, and Carolyn and Amy, uh, Carolyn Condon and Amy Hunter are out there, uh, Sa uh, Sandy and Dave Thompson are out there. All these people that have that have gone there because they, you know, want to see God uh, reignite uh, the life of His church in that place where uh, it had gone out for a while, and so. And now, um, and so Amanda feels called, led by God, to go back to her home church and be part of what God is doing there. And uh, but, uh, you know, their their gain is our loss in the sense that she has been serving faithfully here over the last several years, uh, been an integral part of our ministry, and uh, she was the in, uh, impetus behind us even starting Kids Church. Uh, that has uh, uh, got a bunch of kids down there every week. Uh, she's been serving faithfully in Impact. And so we just wanted to just just celebrate her faithfulness and God's faithfulness in her life and uh, that God's continuing. So when you don't see her in the coming weeks, don't think that, you know, something has happened. She said she's going to be around and see us. Or, yeah, but uh, um, but that she's going going out and, and doing what God's asking her to do. And uh, do, do you have anything you want to say or add to her? Um, yeah, thank you guys for letting me serve here, um, bringing me in this family. Um, it's a bittersweet moment because obviously when God calls you, he's got a plan and that's good, but I've loved being here. I love you all. Um, all my Monday morning women, I will be here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just again, thank you so much. Such a pleasure to be here. Um, I love what God's doing here. I love this solid kids program we have. Thank you for supporting that financially. Honestly, you guys, it is so amazing um, to be able to send our leaders and do that thing. So a huge thank you to you guys. Um, you're all a part of that happening. Um, and yeah, um, I will see you around. We're not, we're not leaving. Um, this isn't goodbye, but um, yes, if you don't see me here, I didn't drop off the face of the earth. God is just uh, definitely calling us home um, to serve there. So it's a good thing. Thank you so much. Give her a round of applause. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, make sure you tell her how much you love her and how much you've appreciated her ministry in her kids' lives. And make sure you give her a big hug. A lot of emotions going on. She's, she's a single mom. She, does, she homeschools. She, she does everything. So she's probably feeling all kinds of emotions today. So make sure you love on her and give her a big hug as she heads out. Okay. All right. Why don't you? Oh, I have a, I have a call to worship here. It's a nice transition to Mother's Day. Listen, this is Psalm 78. Oh, my people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. What we have heard and known, what our fathers have told us, we will not hide those things from our children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power, the wonders he has done, his decrees and statutes for Jacob, and establish the law in Israel, which he commanded our forefathers to teach their children. So that, the, here's why. Why do we teach our children? So that the next generation would know who God is, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. And they wouldn't be like their forefathers, those stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him. So, listen, the difference between a generation that knows and loves and follows God and a generation that doesn't is, is faithful parents teaching their kids to love, know, obey, follow, serve Jesus. So moms, I want to honor you today and I want to celebrate you today and I want to know, I want to remind you that this is an awesome, awesome responsibility and it feels overwhelming at times, but this is what God's called us to. It's the job and he's going to get glorified when we do it. So why don't you stand and let's worship together this morning. Let's sing Marvelous Light. Into marvelous light I'm running Out of darkness, out of shame By the cross you are the truth the life you are the way I once was fatherless a 
so you guys can kind of listen to it if you got a chance. Um, it's, it's called His Name is Jesus, and it is a literal just description of how great and awesome our Savior is. Um, yeah, all authority belongs to him. He reigns in victory. Like, these are just promises that, like, um, describes Jesus. It's such a powerful, good song. So if you don't know it, uh, it's pretty easy to catch on, and um, if you do, shout it out loud because it's so good. So, his name is Jesus. Come. 
storms see the scars of love upon his hands. The king is in the room. We'll watch the darkness flee at his command. Who is this king? Who is this king? His name is Jesus, His name is Jesus, light of the world, there's freedom in His name, awesome and power, reigning forever, light of the world, there's freedom in His name. in the room let miracles break out across this place the Savior's in the room no soul beyond the boundaries of His grace there's resurrection power in His name his name is Jesus, His name is Jesus, light of the world, there's freedom in His name, awesome in power, reigning forever, light of the world, there's freedom in His name, His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus, light of the world, there's freedom in His name, awesome in power, reigning forever, light of the world, there's freedom in His name, there's freedom in His name. There's freedom in His name. There's never been a love so great. There's never been a love so great. He died so we could live. Then He rose up from that grave. Name another King like this. Now all authority forever belongs to Him. He reigns in victory. Name another king like this. There's never been a king no great. He died so we could live. Then he rose up from that grave. Name another king like this. Now all authority forever belongs to him. He reigns in victory. Name another king like this. Name another king like this. Who is this king? His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Light of the world. There's freedom. In his name, awesome and power, reigning forever, light of the world. There's freedom in his name, and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus, light of the world. There's freedom in his name. Awesome in power, reigning forever, light of the world, there's freedom in His name. There's never been a love so great, He died so we could live, then He rose up from that grave. Name another King like this, now all of us. Forever belongs 
We can cling to those descriptions of you, your character, God. Um, there is freedom in your name, Lord. Um, gosh, it like breaks the chains. It breaks the yeah, the chains of sin in our lives. God, the name of Jesus um, does everything for us. Gets us a path to you. And so, God, I just pray that we would just sit on that and God just remember that, be reminded of that every day, all day long to help us, like, stay on your path, God, because life is hard, and so, God, I just pray that you would just cling to us, that you would help us um, in the moments where we feel like we're fleeting from you. God, turn us back around. Um, You and the help of our friends are the only way we can do that, and so, God, I just, um, I pray that we would just, um, yeah, declare your name, Jesus. So, um, Heavenly Father, I pray for Nathan as he comes up. Um, yeah, God, and the, and the four mothers that are going to come up here and just kind of um, speak on life with you, life with family, and all that stuff. And so, God, I pray for just all the mothers in this room, Lord. Um, like Nathan said, they're giving, given probably one of the toughest jobs in that they take care of their children and taking care of their husbands. And so, God, I just pray that you would just continue to help them, um, build them up, encourage them as they walk through life, um, God, and help us um, to to be encouragement for them. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for everything you've done for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, now's the time for little ones to one last chance to hang out with Amanda Fainer downstairs in Kids Church. So thanks, Amanda. And uh, so now's the time to head down. We're going to do something different today. Yeah. We're going to um, we're going to bring some moms up on stage here. Yeah. So if that's uh, come on, ladies, Rebecca and Paige and Nicole and let's see, let's we need five chairs. Yeah. So that should be. Don't all rush up here at once, right? Do we, we might need uh, more, more than one mic here. All right. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Come on, ladies. All right. Let's see. Yeah, we got another mic. Test. So this is Nicole Notes. Rebecca Rouse, Paige Fleming, and Linda Tenney. And uh, so, yeah, thanks. Here. Okay. Gotcha. Whoa. This isn't made for, like, all of us to be up here at once. When the, no, 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 we're good. When the Knights of Pythias built this, uh, uh, they only built it for, you know, one or two people, I guess, but... Uh, we're going to modify it and make it a place to worship Jesus, right? Okay. Um, I'm going to need my notebook over there. I'll get it. All right, here. Okay. So, you know, for 30 years, I've preached a Mother's Day message which is awesome. The Bible has a lot to say about moms and about parenting. Um, and that's good. Um, but it's always interesting to hear an old guy, an old man talk about parenting, uh, about motherhood, particularly. Um, I don't have any experience being a mom. Um, and, um, and so we're, you know, I, I thought we would do something a little different to get some moms up here so you could hear from them and what their experience is. And so I'm just going to kind of ask them a series of questions, but I wanted to start out with just kind of laying the foundation of why this is such a big deal and why, why 
motherhood and, and parenthood is so important. And it's so important in the church. You got a little idea of it from the Psalm 78 that I read this morning. But here's, here's, here's the deal. God's plan for human flourishing and for human society to flourish begins with his good and beautiful design for marriage and family. Uh, marriage and family is the actual building block, the actual foundation for all of human society and human flourishing, right? And sadly, we have to actually go back even a, a level further than that. It has to be stated clearly today that God's good design for marriage and family begins with heterosec heterosexual monogamous marriage, uh, being that, that God's good design for marriage and family is one biological man uh, and one biological woman becoming one flesh for one life, okay? That's God's good plan. That's God's good design. Um, Satan's a counterfeit, and he always tries to hijack and to counterfeit what God has established as his good design and, uh, and to distort and actually pervert God's good design for human flourishing. Um, so in Genesis, God gave his creation mandate to man and woman who he brought together and united them in marriage. And, and, you know, he said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, uh, be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. And then he gave this beautiful creation mandate. He says, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and rule over it as God's representatives on earth. And uh, bringing a productive ordering of earth and its inhabitants to the glory of God and, and as God's vice regents on earth, okay? And so God's good design for human flourishing begins, again, with marriage and family. And God's intent is that husbands and wives would be fruitful and multiply, that is, produce children. And, and then nurture and raise those children to know him and to understand who he is and that it was God who formed them in the womb and that's what gives them their identity, Right? It is God who created them male and female. It is God who made them in his own image for his own glory and purpose. And that, if we could just start our kids off with that, they would be so, they would have a better understanding of who they are and what God's made them for in the world. Because our children need to understand that they are God's image bearers. And that gives them an inherent value and dignity and worth uh, aside from anything else that they would do in life, right? It starts with God and who God made them to be. And so as parents, we uh, need to remember that the children that God given, has given us, and this is, this is another important statement, that the children that God has given us are not ours. That's a hard one. That's a real hard one, right, ladies? We're going to talk a little bit about that. That the children that God has given us are not ours. Because we're all like, secretly, we're all like control freaks. And we want to control our kids, and we want to think that they're our kids, right? But uh, an understanding that our children are gifts from God, the Bible says that they're a spiritual heritage from God. They're gifts from God. They're blessings from Him. And He's entrusted to them, them to us to train and to know and to love, train them up to know, love, and obey God, right? The God who made them. And so that's the mission of parenthood. That's the job. And it's not an easy one. Um, it's the job of motherhood, right? First, as Deuteronomy tells us, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength for us as parents for us as moms and dads, to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, um, and then to consistently and intentionally teach our children about who God is and what He has done. And we're to teach them the righteous, just laws of God that He commanded us to obey and, and to learn to live rightly under His authority by starting out living rightly under our authority as moms and dads. So that, and the goal is always, so that they will put their trust in Him and love Him and obey Him and then in turn teach their own children to put their trust in Him and to love Him and obey Him so that each generation will put the, its hope anew in God. And that is God's good plan for marriage and family. Easy peasy, right? Not so much, right? Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of ask a, a series of, of questions and, and uh, just want to get your take on this and hear some things from you. Um, and the first one is, so what is as if we don't have a glimpse of it already from what we just read, what is the greatest challenge of being a mother for you? And, and that can be a lot of different things, but yeah, I'd love to hear you all weigh in on that. What's your greatest challenge or struggle as a mother? We don't have to go on the line. Whoever first, go, go Rebecca. Okay, so. Get that mic right up there. Greatest um, makes you think there's only one thing, but I, 
I think it's <laughs> so much more than that. For sure. Um, but I'd say handling situations with gentleness and patience. Um, and I think it's beautiful that you said, like, they're our gift. Because, like, I almost feel like that makes you feel like, oh, I should handle them with gentleness and patience. Right. Um, the other one I would say is not comparing to other moms. Um, I think a lot of times we get in groups or around other moms and then you're like, oh, I don't, you know, like, oh, that isn't what our house looks like. Um, social sh- social media is great on that, right? Oh, it is. Giving you it a picture good. of all the other women that have their whole act together and they baked sourdough yes. bread today, plus they, they all got they yep. did all their kids' hair and everything was perfect, right? And that's like, comparison is yes. like death, right? That's yeah. the power of filters. <laughs> it's not reality, is it? It's not reality, but I never it, look bacon when I make bread. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I don't bread. <laughs> Go so ahead. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, th- I would say those those are the two for me okay. that are the hardest. Anybody else want to weigh in? I think. Um, Get your mic way up. Hello. There you go. Okay. There you go. <laughs> uh, the f- <laughs> dealing with the feeling of failure. Um, Again, coming back to the comparisons, we, we try to do, we, we make a plan, we like follow, we, we've talked with God, this is what God wants us to do, and as you're, you're, you're hedging on that path, you're like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do, and then when everybody's weighing in and judging you, and, and people are terrible out there, right. <laughs> if you want to be different, and you want to go the opposite course of what the rest of the, s- of the society is doing, they're going to judge you hard. And when you look different because you're raising your kids in a godly way, it can be kind of brutal. Um, so, yeah, and yeah. then you already are dealing with, I can, I'm not doing this well. God, why did you give me four kids? What the heck am I supposed to do with four of them? What were we thinking? And then that just gives me four times to fail, right? Right, right. Um, but, no, you just have to keep going back to the Lord and say, okay, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? Are we doing this right? And Because over here they're telling me no. But yeah. I need to listen over here to God. That's a good word. I appreciate that. Yeah. Nicole, you got some thoughts on that? Yeah. So I think um, it's seasonal. I So like in this season we're in right now, I think our my biggest struggle is the world. Um, you know, 14-year-olds want to live in the world. And um, I just feel like I'm battling the world no all kidding. the time. No Every every sentence every conversation is a a battle for um all of my children but like my old i mean for the two older ones for their hearts um for jesus and so like i feel like i can't see past anything other than that right now do do you mind if i ask a follow-up question to that to you guys because because that was kind of one of the ones I, i i was highlighting in relation to this is what's the greatest danger your kids face Oh. And in in relate well in in relation to the to the world when we yeah. say we're battling the world I mean that that's pretty generic what wh- yeah. you want to what are some real stuff out there that that our kids are I mean that you're up against that that are dangerous for your kids as far as imbibing stuff from the world and the culture around us yeah so I think for us it's that the world does it better. Um, The world is instant gratification and Jesus, God is patient and, and long suffering and sometimes slow moving. And so when the world can instantly give my boys what they want, um, trying to, you know, still fight the battle for Jesus that like, you know, hang on, I, I, I promise this is like, this is, this is the thing, this is the right thing. Um, that's probably, I think for right now where our biggest danger is, is just the instant gratification that is yeah. so, um, it's just, it's just right there at his fingertips, yeah. their fingertips. And listen, I, I have talked to so many parents and, and this is something that the church doesn't do a great job of talking about. You know, I sometimes get up and we, we talk in hyperbole about the world and the challenges of the world, you know, and we, we say that in generic terms, but the reality is part of what Nicole is saying is that at the fingertips of all of our children, we've put, we've given access to particularly, our, our culture is over-sexualized. We are sexualizing our children from a very young age. And as soon as we put a, ax, give access to our children, and, and, and it all may seem very innocent on TikTok and YouTube, but our children are getting sexualized at a very, very young age. And we have created 
a, a, a culture of instant gratification and normalizing the sexualization of children. Mm -hmm. So that uh, very, very young children are looking at really graphic pornography. Mm -hmm. And this is not something that the church does a good job of talking about. Um, and, uh, and one of the reasons is because the stats are the same in the church as it is in the culture and among spiritual leaders in the church, right? So we've got, we've got spiritual leaders. Um, uh, they did a survey a, a number of years back with uh, pastors, and it was like really high number of pastors, more than two-thirds, 70-something percent of pastors struggle with pornography. And so we've got a, a culture that is very, very sexualized, and we're putting it in little kids' hands that don't know have, have any kind of context for it. And, and then we ask them to love and follow God and have a mind that's focused on God, and, and they're already down the path. They've already been taken captive by, by, by and, and believe me, uh, pornography is as addictive as cocaine and, and any other drug, methamphetamine. And, 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 and so we got right here in our church a lot of people battling pornography, and it's not something the church handles. And, and so I, I would say one of the greatest dangers for our children is we live in a world that is incredibly, especially this American culture, that is incredibly sexualized, and we do it from a very young age. And how do we regain their hearts and minds when they've been imbibing a steady diet of that on a regular basis? Just so, and I don't know always, I don't have great solutions to that other than we start talking about and we start addressing it as parents and as a church. Uh, otherwise, in a generation, our kids are going to be completely taken captive. So I appreciate you bringing that up. That's, that's a big concern of I, I have for all of our children. So. Okay, you have some thoughts on that page? Yeah, on that slight high, uh, Sorry. subtle Sorry. note there, you get to talk about, so greatest challenge or, or danger, greatest challenges of struggle as a mother. I would just say, feeling like I have to be perfect. Um, I work two jobs, single mom. I feel like if I don't have it together, somebody's judging me, right. you know, they're gonna judge my kids. They don't have the latest, you know, PlayStation clothes, whatever. I just feel like I have to have it together and we don't, but I feel like if I don't show that, then they're gonna get judged. And so. Now we're spilling back up into that failure as a mom yeah. part thing, right? Because if you don't feel like you can give your kids all the things that our culture has told us that kids have to have mm -hmm. to be happy, then you're a failure as a mom, right? Mm -hmm. And that's exponentially harder even as a single mom. Um, I don't know how you do it. I mean, it's, it's hard enough for us as, uh, with, you know, two parents in the home. I don't know how you do it on your own. Um, Lots of lots of grace of God, right? Yeah, I appreciate you being up here and being willing to share your your battle and struggle with that. Um, speaking of that, this idea of of the importance of teamwork in parenting, and uh, just as Paige was talking about how hard it is to do it on her own, God's good design, His beautiful design, and and this is not to say. You know, where the ideal is lacking, God's grace is is great, and and uh, um, but God's ideal is because it's so hard to do it on your own. He never intended it to be done on your own. Yeah, He intended for there to be a a husband and a wife together, a team who are raising children together in the Lord, uh, and it's hard to do it as a team. So um, I was going to ask the question to to those of you ladies. What do you as a mother need and expect from your husband in this really difficult task of parenting? What, what, this is, the, this, listen up guys, this is for you. <laughs> if you've ever wanted to ask this question or you should have asked this question by now to your wife, what do you need from me? If you haven't asked this question, today's the day. So here, listen up, guys. You're going to get some, some, some nuggets of wisdom. What do, you, what, what do you need from your husband when it comes to just managing a family and parenting? A partner. Okay. So not a yes man, but a partner. Someone when I am looking for how do we handle this or when we're starting a plan. What are our goals in life as far as what do we want our kids to look like? What are those hard choices we're going to make? We made them together and we followed through together. Um, yeah, and support, encouragement, because yes, moms usually do spend more time with the kids 
And then at the end of the day, we're like frazzled when the little kids are there. And so maybe just like, you know what, honey, you really are doing a good job. It's okay that, you know, the SpaghettiOs is still in his hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? And Some it's in your. <laughs> yeah. 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 Affirmation is good. That's good. Good. Nicole, what do you got? Anything? What do you, what, what do you need from your husband? Yeah. Um, I think uh, steady leadership. Um, not that he's not yeah. steady, yeah. not saying that you're unsteady. Um, but I think, you know, I, oh, well, and I think all of us sort of, you know, we can fall away from the Lord and walking faithfully in step with him. But when we're, when, when Matt is consistently, or even in that place where he's drawing back a little bit or falling away, the, that gap is shorter. And so when he is, steadily seeking the Lord and I just see his leadership being so strong and I just our family just functions so much better when it's played out the way God designed it to play out and when you say leadership are you're talking about like taking the initiative to point the family to God and to make sure that the family's yeah. going in a direction that you guys have coordinated together and and said you know this is this is what we want to see our family grow into this is what we want to see our family become and the husband takes the lead initi initiative to say we're going to go that way we're going to do this we're yeah. going to make some daily choices that move us on that path right yeah absolutely and i think sometimes too like it's okay you know i think my job also is to create the space you know, and give Matt the, the setup, the platform for him to come in and lead. Cause sometimes it is life is just really busy. And I have to, if I want, I, if I want him to lead, um, life just, yeah, just gets busy sometimes. So I think being able to, to just create a place for him to do that. And sometimes that's getting everybody ready and yeah. making it. That's good. That's ready helpful. to go. That's, that's good. And helpful. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, yeah, I love that she brought up leadership because I think that's a huge one. Um, but I, on my before, prior to coming here, I had to write some notes so yeah, I didn't yeah, get yeah. lost. Yeah. Um, but yeah, emotional support yeah. and same team. Um, I'd say like yeah, um, making sure you're on the same page. Um, and I loved like even what Linda said, like just recognizing like when they need a break. Like um, yeah, sometimes. The patience isn't there, and it's like, where's your level of patience? Like, can you handle this dishes better than, you know, right. like I'm going to? So, yeah, I think um, recognizing, like, um, when when she's had enough and, like, um, maybe when you just need to step in and be like, oh, I can do this part. So when you say emotional support for those of us guys that are dummies, um, what does that look like? Is it is it is that... Is that what you just said, recognizing when you've had enough and to step in and go, I got this. Yeah, I, got I would this say, yeah. Is that what emotional support looks like? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Guys, we just need that spelled out really yeah. clearly. I'm glad you asked yeah. so we could what clarify does, that. Because <laughs> guys go, if I was to say to this group, I, I want to, you guys are all smart, but I'm not. So when, when, when my wife says, I really need some emotional support, I go, what does that mean? Yes. Chocolate. <laughs> Chocolate. Uh, and I, 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 I'm one of those guys that said, you know, the, and of course, then it doesn't feel like emotional support. She has to expend emotional energy explaining to me what emotional support is and what she needs yeah. from me. But uh, so hopefully we're growing in, in our understanding of what our wives need and what that looks like, what emotional support looks like. So thank you for being gracious to spell it out for us a little bit. But OK, Paige, you got something, anything that that the kind of support that you need? And it, the, the question I would have for you, Paige, and, and, and the church has a particular responsibility for single moms, okay? Mm -hmm. And so I would say to you, Paige, the question that I would have for you as a single mom, first of all, are what are some particular challenges for you? Uh, what are some of the particular challenges or unique challenges of single motherhood? And then how is we? how can we as a church family come alongside and support you because uh, you, you, need, you need somebody else to come alongside and help? I mean, I would really need the emotional support, like Becca said. Yep. Um, just somebody to see when you need help. Unfortunately, like, yeah, I don't get that. Um, I think you've helped me a lot this past year. Just the prayers that you've given me. Mm. That's really yeah. helped me grow as a person and realize that I'm not alone. Yeah. Even though I feel like I'm alone sometimes. So it's mm. been really great being able to reach out to you. I know Amanda's helped me a lot. Kristen's helped me. So it's just been great having those people to reach out to, talk to. And at the end of the day, even Nicole said one day, like, if you need anything, text me. 
I won't text you. I'll tell you that. I don't reach out for help because mm-hmm. I'm. You're just not used to doing that, no. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to look like I have it together, but I don't. So, yeah. but just the prayers, just keep them coming. Well, and some practical things too, like, like I know that there are a number of men in our church who would be happy to come over and um, turn a wrench to fix yeah. a sink, or um, help you move heavy objects in your, or, or just. Mm-hmm. You know, things like that. I mean, just some real practical help that you could use on a practical basis. And I know that's hard sometimes to reach out for help, but I'm, I'm saying those are things that our church family would uh, be uh, available to do and would want to do and want to support you. So I want you to know mm-hmm. that you've got that. And we need to do better at that. Mm-hmm. And, and, and guys and women and men, I would encourage you, we have a number of single moms in our church, and I would encourage you to um, con- connect with them on a, on a regular basis and go, how are you doing? What do you need? What, how can I support you? Do you need anything this week? And just asking, you know, make Paige say no, you know, yeah. um, I, I don't need anything, you know, but, but hopefully as she gets more comfortable and as others will get more comfortable letting their guard down and saying, I don't have it all together and I could use some help, then, then we have some real opportunity to come alongside and support her. And some of it might be in just helping her with the kids and shuttling kids around, or mm-hmm. I don't know what, but, um, um, I just, I just want you to be aware that all of you know that parenting is super hard and parenting alone is next to impossible apart from the grace of God. And so um, come alongside, come alongside and ask and help and support and encourage, okay? Thanks for being willing to come up here and be vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, what's one thing that you could do to improve the quality of your family this year? What's something that you could do to improve the quality of your family this year? That's quite an open question, I know, but. Mm-hmm. Um, so one thing that, like, we've talked about in our family is, like, devotionals and, like, yeah. diving into God's word as a family. Um, and, like, Jordan's one that just went on the retreat, so, like, on fire to read his Bible and, right? Um, so, like, yeah, making the space to, like, sit down as a family and, like, read it and discuss it and not just, like, Oh, cool. Jordan's reading his Bible. Let him, like, read his Bible by himself. Yeah. Like, um, so I'd say that's a huge one. Um, and I think that's when good. you're teaching kids through devotionals, like, you learn Absolutely. so much more. A yeah. lot. Oh, that's a great one. Um, yeah. In fact, stay tuned, men, for Father's Day. Um, I'm going to give out a book f- called Family Worship or Family Devotions that will give you a give you some tools to, if you go like, I don't know, we've never done this in our family, or I don't know where to start or what that looks like to do a, a f- to lead my family in, in devotions or to talk about God or to sp- have spiritual conversations in my home. Um, w- I'm going to give you a book that's really simple and some really clear steps and some ideas about how, how that can happen in your home and how you can do exactly what Nicole and Rebecca just said of, of taking the initiative to lead my family spiritually. So we'll, we'll talk about that on Father's Day. All right. Um, good. Thank you. Anybody else? What, uh, what's one thing you could do to improve the quality of your family life this year? I have to say, I've been really bad about coming to church over the last few years. I mean, we've kind of come and go like when we wanted. Um, so I've kind of made it my priority this year to come more. I've been coming, but I haven't really enforced it with my children. It's, you know, really hard for them to sit here and listen. So I've kind of like slacked on that and I really want it to be a goal to like come as a family and join everybody. So that's my goal here on out. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Anybody else? Nicole? Who are you going to go? Oh, okay. Um, I think just slowing down to be intentional with our time. I think quickly business comes into our lives, it seems like, and, um, you know, we sort of go through the motions I see sometimes. And so I think being intentional with each kid, whatever that is that we're doing. um, I've just noticed like Brayden and I have started doing a few things together just intentionally. And um, that time's been super sweet. So just trying to slow things down and um, make our time just, yeah, just intentional. I like that. I like that. Go ahead. Well, um, <coughs> very similar to what Nicole was saying, but I had an advantage that we just moved last year, and so uh, we didn't have anything to do last summer. We didn't know anybody. We didn't have any volunteer or extra jobs or anything, and so 
it was a slow life all summer, and we started having family dinners again at a table at the dining room. Um, we opened up a few nights with game nights. Nowhere near as many, I know, Trin. I know. <laughs> She's my game girl. Um, but yeah. I, yeah. It, we, you know, and so, um, yeah. So I even bought these conversation cards at Dollar nice. Tree. Uh, we just had it at um, dinner the other night. We wrote, broke them out, and we had five answers. I did not know what was on their bucket list, and it was just really neat to get to know my kids. They didn't have anything to do with school or, you know, there's a lot of drama at school. So sometimes it's just, yeah, it was just intentional moments that yeah. I, I decided this last year. Now we have not done in as many as I want. But if you have a goal and you get even just some of it done, it's still more than you would have done before. So it's good. It's good. So what's something you can do as a mom to create an environment of peace and harmony in your home rather than rivalry and conflict? That's a, that's a loaded question, huh? <laughs> listen, I mean, listen, you're, you're living in proximity, and you've got a bunch of sinners living in proximity to one another, bump, bumping up against each other. There's going to be conflict. We're not going to be able to avoid conflict. Um, the question is, what can you do as a mom to create an environment of peace and harmony rather than conflict? Got any thoughts? I hope so. I do, actually. Okay, yeah. let's go. Let's I'm excited go. about this question because I've seen the fruit of it, actually, most recently. So um, I was kind of at my wit's end with, like, tattletaling. Tattle, yeah, tattling. And um, I was like, there's got to just be a way to <laughs> work through this. And I realized that, like, we're not teaching our boys to keep short accounts. And so how do you actually do that? And what does that look like? Um, so each Sunday, um, and it's like my most favorite time, um, at the end of the day, we actually kind of pause our devotional and just spend time like, what's something about the week I don't know that happened? You know, because we try to do that during dinner time. Like, what, um, what happened today? What was the high? What was the low? Um, but during this time, it's like, tell me something I don't know that happened. Um, you know, did you see God in it today? And then we short, we go around and just say, like, Brayden, have I offended you in any way? And if so, what is that? Um, Asher, you know, to Cal, everybody, even Cal, you know, because um, even at five, he has things that he's harboring, too, that if you don't ask him, he's probably not going to be able to convey it. So um, and that's been really sweet. And the other day, you know, I saw uh, two of them, Asher and Cal, uh, and Cal was able to convey, like, that hurt my feeling. And I just saw it just end as quickly as it started. And so that's been super good. And that has brought a lot of peace because there is going to be conflict. And for us, our there's not our routine and our consistency is sometimes inconsistent. We have, you know, we have a brother that comes only every other weekend. And we have another brother who is sometimes here and, and gone uh, with his mom and so it's just there's always going to be a dynamic change and there's always conflict and so like how do we yeah I was just like how do I how do we practically teach you know keeping short accounts and so that's that's probably that. been I love that. it really is it's like my favorite yeah. thing I yeah it's just been so sweet have you ever thought about that parents of, of saying to your kids um, have I hurt you have I offended you that's a risky thing and it's a hard thing to do um, is there anything you need to say to me? Um, you know, I think sometimes we do, well, I, I want to be careful. I, I think sometimes we um, maybe tend to do a better job of that in our marriages than with our kids, of going to our kids and going, mm. because the answer to that question is always going to be yes. <laughs> Have I done something to hurt you and offend you? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, let's get out the list. Um, and so, um, yeah, that's a risky thing, but, but we get to model for our kids that we need the gospel and that we're broken too, and that we need Jesus too, and we need forgiveness too, and to model for them in our home what it looks like to resolve and reconcile and restore because of the grace and forgiveness we have in Jesus. That's good. Yeah. Anybody else have a thought on that? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I would just say open communication. Like, I like kind of go with Nicole here open communication, encourage them to tell us how they're feeling. My hardest thing is, like, when they tell me, like, oh, I did this, to apologize. Um, growing up, apology, you never received that from my mother. Right. So apologizing and admitting my wrong as a parent 
is hard sometimes, but I also want my kids to realize that we as adults make choices that we shouldn't and we have to apologize for them so they can see that it's all a learning thing. That's good. That's good. We need Jesus. We need forgiveness too. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So I actually skipped this question at first, <laughs> I thought. <laughs> yeah, I, I, w- I don't blame you. I, I have three teenage girls at home. I have a son married. Um, when we get together, you know, we, we have stuff. We have stuff. Like just this week, remember those conversation cards? I don't know how they can elicit <laughs> quite an adventure, but like we were yelling at each other, and I'm like, you're sitting down and staying. No, you're staying. And we worked it out. By the end, we had fun again. But okay so that's my preface like there's still stuff but (laughs) even with adult children (laughs) well the adult one wasn't there but i'm sure that would have just made it worse like (laughs) are you an adult adult now oh my gosh okay (laughs) (laughs) okay she did turn 20. (laughs) okay um but no so then i prayed about it more and i realized you know I had to step back, and so we do have stuff, but I don't think we have rivalry. That I, I see that on, I know, TV, right? But that stuff is made of real people. Like, that came from somewhere. Right. It, they just, they're just always after each other and hate each other, and I'm like, oh. Let's not have that. And I realized, you know, some of the things that we did is with young kids, I know, not every time, but sometimes I'd sit them down, and they had to tell their story. How did this, what, your perspective of the story while the other one was not allowed to talk. And that was important because it helped them see, even though their intentions weren't necessarily to hurt the other one, that's how they made them feel. And so they got to see both sides of the story, and then I had to be the, the judge and, uh, you know, yep. figure it out. But, yep. yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. No, no, I appreciate your thoughts. Do you have some thoughts, Rebecca? I do, yeah. Um, so I think understanding our own emotional maturity and, like, um, I guess I the – vibe I guess you bring to your house um and just like understanding like when you need to just step away instead of making it worse um but yeah like giving your kids the space to speak freely um about like how they feel about something um I think also it's super big in our house um feeling just filling your home with like worship music and um I say like Worship music, um, reminders, like scripture, all those things. um, Because it definitely makes a difference in our house. It creates Um, an environment, doesn't it? Yeah, especially in the morning. Because we've got a seven-year-old that he needs his worship music. Um, You know, that's true. Emotions are contagious. And you can create an emotional environment that is conducive towards harmony. Or you can create an emotional environment that is not. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've all done a little bit of both, I think, probably mm-hmm. at times. But, um, no, that's good. I appreciate that. That's a real practical thing that you can do. Um, yeah. Praying together, mm-hmm. um, saying I'm sorry, um, creating a, a, a peaceful home instead of a, a home of chaos and conflict, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Good. Good stuff. So, um Here's one more. Um, how do you intentionally point your children to their need for Jesus? We've already kind of talk, talked about that a little bit, but what are some ways that you intentionally point your children to their need for Jesus? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I think first is like reminding them that like as parents, we're sinners too. So like um, when you're apologizing, be like, I'm a sinner, like, um, and that I need Jesus as well. Um, but I think like, like guiding them in prayer during little things um like even in the midst of the day and the just yeah the daily like stuff, right? so for example last night we had we've got one with a wiggly tooth and um he was like scared to go to sleep because he didn't want to swallow the tooth and so like we yeah. prayed we prayed about it and yeah so like yeah little things, even little things yeah. point him to jesus right mm-hmm. Jesus yeah. knows, Jesus cares, yeah. Jesus can And he was like so excited that his tooth did not fall out last night. Yeah. And he was like, because we prayed. Jesus and I said, did it. Yes, Jesus did. showed up, right? <laughs> yeah. All those. So. But, you know, you know that's, that's, the, that's what the Deuteronomy 6 says. When you walk in the way, when you lie down, when you rise up, mm-hmm. all the time, we're just pointing him to Jesus, pointing him to Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anybody else have thoughts on that? Yes. Uh, Go ahead. So <laughs> it's, it's great that it's on the coattails of going to retreat this weekend because that was the first thought I had was that we took our children to church very young. We read their Bible to them and they were very young, you know, every night. But ultimately it came down to Sunday school at church and 
and VBS and ch uh, church camps. That's when it all started to click for them. They, I think all four of my kids were saved as a result of just those, those VBS and camps. And then, you know, so the church did all the hard work, I think, w through Jesus. And then we get to just help point them through that, like, mm -hmm. And, and yes, every day. So uh, the everyday things. Sometimes we're just a blessing happens that they don't understand all the ins and outs of it, but we're able to say, hey, look, you know what? Maybe we couldn't make our house payment this month, and you don't need to know all the details, but God provided for us. And not hiding all the hard stuff mm -hmm. for them, but mm -hmm. still, if you hide all the hard stuff, then they don't really get to see where God is working. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to, of course, take that in bite sizes. I mean, you know, you're like your four-year-old's not going to understand mortgage payments, but you can ex still ex express like, hey, God just did something great and yeah. just as always just showing him and pointing him to Jesus on a daily basis. Wherever you can see Jesus in the daily life, we yeah, just remind our kids, and right? And maybe it's at four, you're just showing them the, the glory of God's northern lights that we just experienced. Yeah. I mean, you just have to find those. And, and it's not hard to find them. We just no. have to remember to say it. Yeah. No, I like that. That's really, really helpful. Remember to tell your kids about Jesus. <laughs> remember to make it all about Jesus. Yeah. No, that's good. Anybody else? Yeah, really just echoing Linda and Rebecca. Um, I think in, you know, pointing them to Jesus in, yeah, um, praises when there's an answered prayer, of a, you know, of the wiggly tooth. But I think, too, like in my shortcomings and my failures, too, like um, it's okay. Like I'll try to um, step away or maybe they'll see me in prayer or like. Um, I got a hard message from my grandma one day and I was like, I, I just need a minute to go pray. Just being like vocalizing kind of like what I'm doing. Or I think too, one of the big things I'm trying to get better at is when God does answer prayer. Um, Celebrating. I want, yeah, I want them to see that what we've been praying for, um, mm -hmm. like the, it, it's, he laid it out right there for us. And so remembering the praises also with like, Jesus, I need you too. So. Yeah. That's good. All right, here's the last one for today. Um, what single thing can you do as a mother that will matter most to your kids in 10 years? What single thing can you do as a mother that will matter most to your kids in 10 years? Are you going? No pressure, but everybody's like getting their pens out to write this down, Yeah, it's right? just one. Yeah. Um, I would say teaching them how to pray and communicate with God um, and yeah. like listen for his voice. Um, because I feel like a lot of people are afraid to pray out loud. So, like, yeah, um, I don't think I learned how to pray until, like, five years ago. Um, so, like, yeah, God hears us and he knows our prayers. Um, but just to, like, teach your kids, like, who who are we praying to and how are we praying? Yeah. Um, That's good. We usually pray every night, and I feel like, yeah, I've seen so much growth in even, like, my kids praying to God. Um, and, like, even, like not just the struggles, but like the celebrations of life, like just thanking God, like in prayer. So, um, that's been a huge, like hurdle I'd say for me. So yeah, hopefully. What a gift to give your kids. Yeah. That mm -hmm. uh, a relationship with Jesus, like they feel like they can talk to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that, and that will be a life changer of the rest of their lives. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Anybody else? What's something that you can do that will make a difference in your kids' lives in 10 years? I think, um, along with that, just I feel like I've been trying really hard to equip, especially since I see my time um, shortening, right. equipping and equipping with God's word and reminding them that the purpose for their life here on earth isn't for them, but it's to glorify God. Because like I just I watch I watch the world and it's scary. It scares me. And so um, I just I do feel this crazy urgency to remind them of what their purpose is and who they're actually here for and to serve that's a biblical that's a biblical mandate redeeming the time because the days are evil there's that sense of urgency yeah we don't have a lot of time and you know you hear that over and over again time is short with your kids and it goes so fast so what are the like what do we want to give them before they walk out our door and go out on their own yeah that's good anybody else have thought on that something one thing you can do well, I cheated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I have adult children, and so I was trying to come up with what I thought was the, ooh, that one thing. 
and I was way wrong. So I thought it was like I used to give, I tried to give my kids a hug every day, and God showed me, you know, that's really just for you, because I'm not a <laughs> huggy person, I'm not a touchy-feely, and so if I don't make that conscious effort to hug them, I don't remember to do it. So I thought that was it. I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, but anyways, I asked my kids, and both of my, two of my kids weighed in, and they said, boundaries, Mom. I was like, what? And so, yeah, they said, you wouldn't let us do social media at certain ages or, you know, these different boundaries that we had um, that were godly-based. And, and we explained to them why we chose these reasons. We prayed about it. This is, this is it. This is the research. Um, and that's what two of them said. And I thought, huh, okay, I'll just keep. I that's have good. no idea what I'm doing. No, no, that's <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. And Thank I, God he's there. Cause <laughs> yeah. I, have, I have just one thought along those lines, too. Not that I'm a mom, but a, a, as we try to create a culture in our home. So just something really practical that we all can do is dinner together. Mm -hmm. Dinner. You, you mentioned it earlier, so it's, it's not. But just because our kids are so scattered and they're going so, there's so much craziness and so much. Our culture is so busy and we've got so many commitments, over commitments that if we can center our kids, and, and I know it's not, you can't do it every night, but as many nights as you can to do, to sit down around the table, look in the whites of each other's eyes, and to have dinner conversations, and to share a meal, and laugh together, hopefully, um, and maybe sometimes cry together, and maybe yeah. ha have important conversations, and the how was your day conversation, and what's going on in your life, and at least this connection point, and don't underestimate the power of the dinner table to, to be a a centering, connecting place for your family and where your family gets their sense of identity and belonging. This is us. This is our family. This is what, this is what it looks like to be a family. Um, and so just, just a thought there, okay? Um, listen, ladies, I am so grateful uh, and appreciative for your willingness to come up here and be vulnerable. I hope it was helpful and encouraging to you. I've heard some really good things and some good thoughts here that were really encouraging to me. Hope that you feel, and, and the goal of this is not to do comparison, moms. The goal of this was not to, to set up some false fake standard to, to, to have you walking out of here feeling condemned or judged or like you're not measuring up to what a, a, a godly mom should be. It's to uh, remind you that we're all in this together and we all have struggles. And um, I, I think all these moms would say that they're not perfect moms and that they struggle and they need the grace of God and the love of God and the strength of God daily to, 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 to fulfill this awesome incredible calling of being a mom and so i hope you don't walk away feeling like we're trying to create some impossible standard here we're just trying to be faithful to what god has called us to as moms and dads and trying to encourage you that we're all in the struggle together and there's other people that are struggling too and sharing similar challenges that you're 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 you're, you're struggling with and now i'm going to pray for you i also want to just offer to to moms um uh, a mother's day gift um, this is particularly, this is called raising, this is called parenting with hope, raising teenagers in a secular age. Um, I haven't read the whole thing yet. I've read most of it. I've read through it and it's excellent. Um, it's just came out. That's why I just got it like a week ago. And, um, and it's, it's, it's excellent. Um, and, um, I want to give it to mothers. Now I have probably 25 of these back there. Um, and this is for, particularly for mothers with teenagers or going to have teenagers in the future. Um, and um, so I want to make this a resource available to you moms. It's so good. It's very convicting. I just want you to know as well. It challenges us on the, the lies of our culture that, that have seeped into our churches and into our families too that we've bought into as far as, um, you know, the, the, the desire to, to keep up with the culture and, make our, and have our kids be smart and uh, successful and popular and participating in all the activities and that that's what good parenting looks like. So it's, it challenges some of that um, and um, calls us back to faithful obedience as, as moms and dads. And so parenting with hope, it's super encouraging it's also convicting, but it's not going to be judgy and preachy. It's just really helpful. It's a really helpful tool. So parenting with hope. So moms, if you are uh, have young kids or teenagers, um, grab one of these. They're on the back table on the way out. This is our gift to you as a church. We want to just put resources in your hands that can help support you and, and give you tools to be um, to, to continue to grow as moms and dads and as, as Christian parents, right? So 
want to put that in your hands. So um, can I just close with this, that, that the battle uh, of parents and moms and dads both, I'm not going to put this all on moms, is, is first and foremost not about your kids' hearts. It's first and foremost about yours. Okay? And, and you need to really, uh, over, over and over again in the scriptures, when it calls us to the responsibility we have to parenting or to faithful obedience to God, it starts with our own hearts first. It says, I want you to commit, first they committed themselves to the Lord, and then they, uh, first you love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and then you teach your children. In other words, we can't ask our children to do that which we are not doing, is, is the idea, right? Because at the end of the day, no matter what you say, no matter how many lectures you give your ch- kids, your kids will worship what you worship. And they'll do what you do. They'll value what you value. Life is caught by you more than it's taught by you. And they will imbibe the values and the priorities that you have because of what you have. And so we've got to make it our priority to love God and to follow God and to serve God and to obey God. So we've got to order our own hearts toward God before we can order our kids' hearts towards God. Do you make sense? All right. Um, So here's the question. Are we communicating to our kids with our priorities, with our commitments and our expectations that that we want them to get good grades, that we want them to succeed in life and in, sc- in school, get good, have good paying jobs, become star athletes, to become popular and have lots of friends? Or are we communicating to them that the priority of their life should be to deeply love and follow Jesus? Okay. More than any other thing, parenting is a call to radically love, follow, and obey Jesus. So our, needs, our kids need to see us, as we've already described here, as these ladies have really done a great job describing they, they need, our kids need to see us running to Jesus and clinging to Jesus and looking to Jesus for grace and forgiveness in our own lives and casting off our own idolatry and casting off fighting our own sin and walking daily and humbly with, with God ourselves. They need to see that in our own lives. They need to see that we practice what we preach, that we accept responsibility for our mistakes and we seek forgiveness when we make them and we ask them for forgiveness. Again, we can't expect our kids to do what we have... What, what we haven't done ourselves. So we're, we're modeling life for them. We're modeling a relationship with God for them. All right. So I'm going to close in prayer today um, by praying for not just these mothers, but all of you mothers. I want to honor you. I want to commend you for the often thankless task of raising children to know, love, and serve Jesus. It's, it's a beautiful, it's God's design for human flourishing, and it's a beautiful thing. It's his mandate to us. It's the creation mandate, and yet it's really, really hard. And we've made it harder on ourselves because of the whole fall and the curse thing, right? Um, And so we're fighting our own demons as we fight the demons that are after our kids' hearts. And so um, because parenting is really, really hard, we need need the grace of God. We need the strength of God, all right? So let's pray. Lord God, thank you for this awesome responsibility. Thank you for the calling that you placed upon our lives to be parents. What a, what a gift. What a blessing. What a heritage from you. But Lord, we desperately recognize again, over and over again in our daily lives as parents, that we need to anchor our souls and our hearts in you. Um, so help us to grow in our own commitment and obedience and devotion and love and connection with you so that we can have something to offer our kids so that we can uh, serve them with hearts that are filled with your love and your grace and your joy and your peace. Um, Give us a desire to love you and uh, to learn to love what you love and to hate what you hate and to um, be the presence of Jesus, to manifest the presence of Jesus in our homes and our families. I pray that you'd be with with moms and help, help them as they battle their own sin and put off sin and put on the fruits of the Spirit, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self control. I pray that these would be evident in our home and in our marriages and, and, and as we model our, uh, to our kids um, the love and grace of Jesus. Give, give moms and dads, give moms wisdom and grace to be able to set, first and foremost, set our minds and our hearts and our affections upon you and then to point our kids and invite our kids to do the same. Um, give us grace and forgiveness when we fail and remind us that you are our sufficiency You are our strength. You are our hope and our ever-present help in times of need. And we can cry out to you and we can come to you. And where the ideal is lacking, your grace is present and sufficient and superabounding. We're so grateful 
for that. I pray that you would just pour out. Thank you for these ladies that have come and shared their hearts today. And thank you for all the moms that are represented here. I pray that you would honor them. I pray that you would uh, help them to point their kids to you. And we'll just give you the praise and the glory for, for um, all the kids in this room that you are uh, raising up in, in godly homes and families. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I bless you, mothers. I affirm you. I want to celebrate your, uh, what, what God is doing in your hearts and in your home and just encourage you to keep on keeping on. Keep on for the glory of God. All right, we got a, a we got a closing song. Do you want to do that, or do you want to just? All right. As as the worship team's coming, thanks. You guys might want to go down there, or we don't need to move all the. As the worship team's coming, um, just want to remind you that this week on Thursday night starts the Young Adult Christian Fellowship. There's some flyers back on the table back there, but that's. Uh, Thursday night at 7, starting at, uh, um, at um, the Waller's house. Food, time of prayer, devotion, hanging out. That's for young people, you know, post-high school. So any high school graduates um, on up until uh, Linda Tinney's age. And that's where the cutoff is, okay? All right, sorry, sorry. All right, so Young Adult Christian Fellowship, if you have any questions about that, see uh, Emily or Bradley Waller on that, all right? Thanks for coming and worshiping with us. All right, let's stand and close worship service. Um, the song is called Give Me Faith. Um, yeah, it's uh, just a song about opening our eyes, shaping our life for him, surrendering our lives to him. And I couldn't think of a better way to end service just like that with, with, all, the, with all our mothers and husbands just like listening to their um, wise wisdom and just like, and just all that stuff, like, God, just soften my heart towards my kids, soften my heart towards my wife, wives, soften my heart towards the kids and husbands. And so, um, yeah, let's sing this song.
that doesn't give you some affirmation. I may be weak and my flesh may fail. We can feel like that as parents. We can feel like that as moms. But where the, where the ideal is lacking, God's grace and his spirit and his power and his strength and his forgiveness is made perfect in our weakness. Isn't that beautiful? So pray that you walk out of here encouraged and not feeling condemnation and just hopeful and encouraged and uh, a renewed sense of a, a passion to take on this awesome responsibility of raising up these kids to know, love, and follow Jesus. So go out and live it now in your homes. Happy Mother's Day, moms. Have a great day celebrating in your homes with your families. We'll see you next week.